Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today I went ahead and left my office. We are actually out in the park today. It is a very sunny and bright day, and we are heading behind the scenes. Today, we are checking out our commissary. Those of you who tuned in yesterday, you got your teaser for the week of what our entire schedule is looking like from Monday all the way through Friday. And today is gonna be all about food. So hopefully you brought a bit of an appetite. I'm not sure how much of the diets we're gonna check out today are going to make your stomach growl. I guess we'll have to wait and see. A lot of it is stuff that we might be eating too. But I wanna say good morning to Piper, Jennifer, Pam, good morning, Samantha, Anna, uh, Christina and Maxim, nice to see you all tuning in live this morning. But like I said, we are here behind the scenes. In fact, to give you a little bit more of a lay of the land, just right over on this side of the fence is where our carousel plaza is. So if you wanna know where we are in the park, we're right close to the parking lot and kind of our behind the scenes hub where all of our staff kind of enter and exit the park safely and right next door to our commissary or our main zoo kitchen. Good morning, Peyton, nice to see you tuning in. Diane, Daphne, oh my gosh, Anna, Claire, and Benjamin, good morning. And good morning, Matt, nice to see all of you this morning. Sarah Grace, hello, happy Tuesday. Today, like I said, we are talking all about food. In fact, we're gonna start making our way on over there. It's gonna be a whole lot of commotion because our commissary technicians are doing their thing. They are busy making those diets as we speak actually, but before we head into, I guess the main zoo kitchen, let me go ahead and turn around this camera so that way y'all can see what I'm looking at here. Oh, Sarah Grace, I'm so glad you could hear the carousel. I was wondering if it was noisy enough for y'all. But this good looking vehicle is what we like to call our Meals on Wheels here at the zoo. This is kind of the transport vehicle that gets loaded up with all those diets each and every day and gets driven all around our behind the scenes roads here at Riverbanks to deliver all those different diets for our animals. But right next door to it over here is where we're gonna go inside for a quick second before heading into our kitchen because in here is where we store a lot of our dry foods. Now, a lot of times you think of apples, oranges, all those different produce items, but check out these big bags that we're looking at. We are looking at wild, herbivore diet, which if you couldn't tell by the photo includes things like antelopes, gazelles, giraffe, rhino, definitely important for us to have on our radar as we prepare for rhino later this summer. But there are a whole lot of bags of this wild herbivore diet. And what always surprises people is that there is a company, there's multiple companies, but the one main one that we use is called Missouri. It's based right here in the United States that designs these diets to be very nutritional for animals found all over the world. It's quite the daunting task, but we trust them because they work with animal nutritionists and veterinarians to make sure all those ingredients are exactly what they need. Anna, I have to pause and give you a huge big thank you though. It sounds like you're about to recycle your old phones and iPads to help with gorilla conservation. All of those donations, bring them on over to guest relations right at the front of the zoo, and they can go ahead and help you recycle them right here. But I wanna turn around here quick and look at this <laughs> vintage chalkboard for the daily and weekly deliveries. You can see you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, pretty much the entire week. And then you notice it mentions things like giraffe, zebra, farmyard, some days are no delivery days. All of those areas have their own kitchens then that store these items. So this is kind of the hub where it all begins and then heads out into the rest of the park. Oh, out of the corner of my eye, I just noticed primate diets is sitting right here though. Missouri primate diets, if you can believe it. We got some lemurs on top, the tamarins, and then of course, gorillas as well. Might get a little bit of the dry food. You might be able to hear a train that's rocking right on outside of us right now. But this is where all of our dry food is stored. Um, it's not all of our food, of course. Our animals don't just eat dry food. Just like you don't eat just cereal or just granola bars, 
you got to mix up your diet too. And so do our animals. So we're constantly offering them a, a range of different items that we like to mix it up seasonally, but then also daily as well. So that way they're getting all those nutrition pieces that they need on a regular basis. Now, if you can imagine this, we have over 2000 different animal residents that need to be fed every day, which equates to right around 300 animal diets daily. Anything from our giraffe all the way down to our tiny geckos need to be fed. And this is where it all happens. So keep those questions coming on in everybody. I'm glad that you're enjoying this behind the scenes look, but let's get ooh, back on out into the sunshine because we are going to head into the commissary. Let me go ahead and turn around this camera so you can see as we head on in. Let's go ahead and get through. Ugh. We'll give a big wave good morning to our commissary technicians, our team members on over here. They are gonna be busy making these diets, working on all these diets. But before we take a look at what they're prepping today, they went ahead and got out some of our, our recipe cards, you could call them. There are diet cards that are changed on a regular basis, dependent on our animal needs. But all of these different colorful pages represent a different example of one of our diets. In fact, one that I want to point out, this pink one is for Texas tortoise. Now, Texas tortoise is an individual that we're going to be highlighting on Thursday for Z Learning. So keep Texas tortoise on your radar. But if we take a look at what she gets fed, she gets fed chopped romaine, the dark leafy greens, carrots, and that Missouri tortoise diet. So she gets a dry food as well. And then calcium carbonate. It is this blue card right here. And if you take a look at the name up here, it might be a little hard for y'all to read, but it's for Kazi and Macy. And it covers all of the different items that they need to eat on a regular basis. Now, Amanda, I'm gonna task you with this. You're in charge of all the conversions this morning because everything here is weighed out in grams. You can see cabbage, kale, romaine, banana, bell pepper, and it goes on to carrots, celery, cucumber, green beans, and even kiwi, all weighed out and measured in grams. Now, it's not just estimated. Things aren't just thrown into buckets. Everything is so scientifically measured. So that way we're making sure our animals aren't under eating or overeating. Even though we would love to all overeat and snack all the time, our animals would too. But in order to have a healthy, balanced diet, the weight of the food is oh so important. Marie, you're wondering how many times a day do we feed the animals? Well, it just kind of depends on the animal. Some animals get fed every day, multiple times a day, while some other animals, say our anaconda that we're going to feature tomorrow, well, our anaconda only eats but once a week. But some other examples that we have here is Koshka, one of our tigers, sea lions over here as well, and then our kangaroo and wallaby mob that we have here too. So there are lots of different examples. In fact, if you think of animals all around the globe, they're not just eating fruits and vegetables all the time, and they're definitely not just eating dry food. They're also eating other animals. So if y'all can stomach it, I wanna head over to our meat station. We've showed this kind of stuff before, especially when we were over at sea lion but I wanna show you what it looks like here on the kitchen view, because this is the step for thawing out, prepping, weighing, chopping if it needs to be done. But take a look at that big herring. We got squid over here, lots of different types of seafood, because we have lots of different types of marine animals that have to have those kind of natural ingredients that they would find out in the wild, whether they be residents in the aquarium, or the penguins in the birdhouse, or of course our big sea lions. But they're not our only animals that are eating meat too. In fact, we're gonna kinda slide on over here. We're gonna try not to get in the way too much. <laughs> but we even have well, a whole lot of fish over here that y'all can see. But if you notice here, when we were in our aquarium and reptile complex recently, we talked a whole lot about snakes and lizards. And tomorrow we're gonna be doing a feature all on anaconda. And Karen's gonna talk about what the anaconda eats and anacondas don't eat apples and oranges they eat other animals and sometimes they come in the form of frozen foods like frozen rats frozen mice too that all of course are humanely euthanized and then frozen at other facilities not here and then they are shipped here 
in a healthy manner, of course, and then perfectly thawed out and then fed out to all those different animals that might have a taste for meat instead. We're gonna head over to the produce section in just a second, but I wanted to dip on into one of our refrigerators because there might be some more examples of great diets on in here. Diets, frozen, thawing out right now. This is processed meat for our big cats mainly. So think lions and tigers. This comes frozen. It has all the vitamins and minerals that our cats need. And then it can be turned into meatballs of sorts for those residents. But it's not just all about the meat, of course. We have fresh produce that's hanging out in here. And our commissary team works very hard to source this stuff as locally Shoo, I lost y'all there in the refrigerator. I'm not shocked that there's not good surface in there. But what I was just mentioning about was our produce. We have some examples of produce over here too. And one of the things that our commissary staff do such a great job at is making sure that we can source locally as best as we can and seasonally. So if you check out things like sweet corn, gourds and squashes, oh, there's even grapes up here at the top. You actually might be noticing some brand names yourself that you might recognize from grocery shopping on your own. All of the food that our animals eat, even though some are specifically made for animals, a lot of them are for humans as well. We would be eating the same kind of stuff. It's not the day old bruised, this is restaurant quality food that we'd be feeding out to our animal residents. And all the produce is such a great example. Take a look at those onions. Now you might be wondering what animals eat onions. Those of you who were wondering about the gorillas earlier, our gorilla troop loves to just treat it like a big apple almost and just take big, huge bites out of things like onions. So we have to make sure to have lots of different types of foods. You can see our commissary staff are busy chopping and weighing and prepping all those different diets. They are some of the staff that arrive here the earliest in the morning every single day to get those diets going for the next day. They're always ahead of the curve, you could say. But check out those sweet potatoes on the bottom, bananas, carrots. Ooh, shout out to the apples though. Apples are actually the most popular produce item that we order here at Riverbanks. In fact, if you check out our caption today, you can see just how many cases of apples we get on a yearly basis. It's well over 600 cases every single year because there are so many different animal residents that might be enjoying apples. Kale, collards, lots of different examples. There's some broccoli and cucumbers up here. If your stomach's not growling, I don't know why it's not. Maybe you just had a big breakfast, but all of this food looks extra delicious and colorful. But right here too before we head on over into the bird area is where lots of different dry foods that are packaged and prepped for some of our smaller animal residents but you can see there's some different examples canine diets a rabbit diet insectivore animals that like to eat insects they have different dry foods that are able to be nutritionally sound and much easier to feed out for some of our individuals uh, Emmy, age 12, I love that question about what kind of training, because this is kind of a unique situation. It's almost like zoo chefs in here. Now, their backgrounds range all over the gamut. A lot of them have experience working with animals or around animals, um, but we're actually gonna kind of peek over here at our station where they're prepping bird diets. Oh, now if only you all could smell it. I know you can see it this morning but the smell is very aromatic over here. It smells very fruity. We have our commissary technicians chopping up, prepping. Look at all those different measuring and even the nutcracker too. You gotta think of all the different diversity we have from our bird collection here at Riverbanks. It really does take a whole team of people to make Riverbanks run. We are our own city right here at Riverbanks. So it is far more than just feeding our animals, it's doing the research into what's healthy for them, and all the research that goes into behind it. Oh, wait a second, hold on. We did get a donation this morning. Marie, thank you so much for donating to Riverbanks. Your support means so much to us. Thank you, thank you. That's gonna go back to support our general fund here at Riverbanks. 
and allows us to be able to continue our mission right here in Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, Becca, age 12, was wondering what animals eat the most. Well, I'll be honest, it's not the birds. In fact, these are just a couple of different examples of diets. You can see a little bit of fish, some tiny little meatballs. I have to show you those. Those are cracking me up earlier. But as far as the animals that are eating the most, it's probably going to be our animals that weigh the most. If you think of animals like our giraffe, our goats are going through a whole lot of food. But honestly, our gorilla troops really do consume a whole lot of food as well. They really do eat a ton of food every single day. <laughs> Keep those questions coming on in, everybody. Oh, Caroline, age 11. I am so sorry I missed your question. I don't even know where it is. I'm trying to scroll through and find it. Let me see if I can locate where it is. Send it on in again, Caroline. That will help me be able to find it. I might have lost it when we lost service over in the refrigerator this morning. Ooh, another opposite question. What animals eat the least? Probably the animals that eat the least here at Riverbanks are going to be our reptiles. They have a bit much slower metabolic rate than our mammals or our birds do, which means that they don't need as much energy, say like our birds that might be eating this yummy medley. So instead, some of our reptiles truly only eat or are offered to eat, but once a week, sometimes they skip a week. It just depends. If you think of predators, say like an anaconda, they might have one big, huge meal and then say, eh, I'm full. I don't need anything. I'm good. And they might not eat for a little while. So, oh, another big thank you to whoever just donated. Thanks so much. We're now up to $30. Andrew, thank you so much for donating and supporting Riverbanks. I really appreciate it. Uh, by the way, good morning, Rick. Thanks for tuning in. Nice to see you. Your comment yesterday is still cracking me up. So thanks for the laugh. But our animal diets really do range. And Anna, age 10, you were wondering what are the lions eating? Well, the lions are going to be eating that processed meat, those kind of big tubes of meat that we were looking at, hopefully in the refrigerator before we lost service, you might've been able to see that. Let's see, Caroline found your question. How do we feed the underwater animals? That's a great question. I love that. It just kind of depends. Our sea lions and our harbor seals, for example, they're trained to actually work through training sessions with our keepers, and that's when they receive those different food items. Well, maybe during one of our scheduled demonstrations, but that actually happens up out of the water or while they're actually swimming in the water, just not the keepers swimming in the water with them, per se. Other underwater animals, say like some of our residents of the aquarium, they're actually fed underwater by divers during scheduled dive feedings. So it kind of depends. Some of the food items that they receive float up at the top and other food items sink all the way down to the bottom for them to forage for. Oh, hello from South Africa. Nice to see you tuning in, friend. How funny is that? All these familiar faces. Amber, thank you so much for donating. Let me go ahead though and turn around this camera so that way we can give a, a wave goodbye to our commissary staff. They are so busy. Oh, actually, one quick view. Look at how frozen that is. When I said they arrived frozen, there's a whole lot of thawing that has to happen. So step one, or step two, I should say, and then one of the final steps before they actually head out to be a snack for some of our animals. Thank you all so much for letting us come visit, though, this morning. Good luck, and keep on doing great work. All right, everybody, we're going to head out where we get a little bit better service, hopefully. We're going to kind of peer through here. Ooh, back to where it's really nice and sunny. Thank you all though so much for coming along with for our adventure to our commissary. Their Meals on Wheels right behind us. Now there is a whole lot of work that I, like I said, that goes on behind the scenes at Riverbanks. Every single day is a different adventure and it's the work that we do to support our amazing animal residents because there are over 2,000 mouths to feed. So that is a whole lot of work that has to happen. Oh, Quick answer though, Sarah Grace, you're wondering about those cockroaches. What do they eat? Not a whole lot of food, don't worry. Since they're so small, they don't have a huge big diet and appetite, but they love a little bit of produce and they love some of those dry foods too. Thanks for asking. Uh, great questions, everybody. I'm gonna jump on the comments later on this afternoon to answer anything else you might be curious about. But one more time, don't forget, tune in tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We are going to actually be inside of the anaconda habitat in our aquarium and reptile complex you know what habitat i'm talking about with that humongous snake probably one of our biggest snakes that lives here at riverbanks 
So you're not going to want to miss tomorrow's feature. So we will see you all tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And another quick shout out to everyone who donated. You all are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting Riverbanks and our mission to create connections, inspire actions, and most importantly, impact conservation. Thank you all so much and we'll see you tomorrow morning.